moderators can support your channel in even more ways. Let's see. Introducing managing moderators. These users have same capabilities, but in addition, they can manage block words and change chat modes in the live. Okay. <laughs> Hello. How's everybody doing? I hope y'all are having a great day today. Hello, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Hello, hello, hello. Need five thumbs up. Okay, great. Thank you. Ron Wilson is here. Latrice is here. Maddie is here. Hello. Everybody, welcome. Come on in as you come in. Give a thumbs up to Jeannie Young's Live. Melissa, hello. How's everybody doing? I hope y'all are having a great day today. Ready to make some cabbage. Hello, Lynette. Debbie, hello. Denise, uh, oh, Ron says, I'm doing better. Okay, that's great. I'm doing some better, okay. Yvette, hello. Debbie Parker, hello. Gina, Gina, Gina. Hello, Debbie. Shirley, hello. How are you? Is everybody ready to make cabbage today? We're doing something simple. We're going to do something healthy. And I couldn't be more excited today. Cat Lover is here. Denise and Robin, hello. Tanya Mays, hello. Jermella and Chaplin. Demetria Phillips and Edith is here. Brenda's here and Denisha's here. Hello, Melissa or Michelle, I'm sorry. Shaniqua is here. Zen God is here. Hello. Adrian, hello. Lissa and Cheryl. Mikhail is here. Hello. How's everybody doing? Listen, if you have not given a thumbs up, give a thumbs up. Back out of the live, give a thumbs up, and then come back in. Okay? Absolutely. All right, Gerald is here. Brenda Willis, hello. All right, Martha, hello. Thank you, Ron. He says we need 150 more thumbs up. Give a thumbs up. Listen, during this live chat, you all need to make sure that the thumbs up match with the people that are in here. So right now, I can see everybody that's in here. We got 224 people in the chat. And then I can see the people that has not given a thumbs up. It's only 84 people that's given a thumbs up. Let's bring the thumbs up so that they match with the people that's in here. We're going to have fun today. We're making cabbage, Gina Young style. Now, now normally, I um, would be making like some homemade cabbage. But I don't feel like it. <laughs> so I bought some, uh, not cabbage, some homemade uh, cornbread. I don't feel like making it homemade. So I got some pre-made cornbread, and it's going to be delicious. If you want to make, like, rice to go with your cabbage, absolutely you can. And also, if you're the person that wants to put potatoes into your, what? If you want to put potatoes into your cabbage, you can. It'll be delicious, okay? I might skip the cabbage because we're kind of uh, watching our carbs over here a little bit. But we'll just see. And if you decide you want to put the potatoes in your cabbage, I'm still going to show you how to do it, okay? Still going to show you how to do it. Okay, let me see. Let me get this computer going, and we're going to get started. We'll wait for maybe a, a, a couple more people to come in, and then... Um, I'm going to jump up, get my apron on, get my hands washed. We're going to get started. Take a note, says Sonia. Sonia, how are you doing today? Saj, hello. How are you? Tea cakes, hello. Okay, I'm having breakfast for dinner. Okay, that's exciting. All right, Alina, hello. Ron says hello to Raymond. Uh, Ron, it's so good to hear that you're feeling, you know, somewhat better. 
Mildred, hello, how are you? Lisa Cummings, Lisa Cummings. Deborah is here and Bobby Banks is here. Hello, let me take some medicine and uh, I'm ready. We're ready to rock and roll. Let's bring the thumbs up up. Bring the thumbs up up, make it match with the people that's in this chat. Okay, what else do I need to do? Is there something else I need to do before we get started? Can you take the computer and run it around the other side for me? Sonia says, hey, Raymond and Ron, I hope you are doing better. Deborah is here, hello. Raymond says, give a thumbs up. How you doing, Raymond? How you doing, little bit? How are you, Melissa? Gina, my first live with you. Well, welcome, Sharon. Thank you for coming in. I'm so excited to have you here with us. Uh, everybody, welcome, Sharon, to the live, if you can. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the... Um... Okay, got it. It was a piece of hair. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the microphone. Now, when I'm sitting here, the microphone sound will sound real low until I make my way the other side of the island, then the sound will turn up, okay? I just like to tell you all that because sometimes people, some people like to freak out. No sound, Gina. The sound will come right back in, okay? For welcoming Sharon. Sharon, you're gonna see just how much fun we have here at uh, one of Gina Young's live sessions. We're gonna cook. After we cook, we say a prayer, and then after that, I come back behind the counter where I'm at right now, and we'll sit and chit chat for a little bit. Okay, let's get my apron on, or my, what you call it? You know what it is, microphone. Okay. Let's make sure it's on, okay. And get our apron on, get our hands nice and clean, get your ingredients out, okay? One of the first things that we're going to do when we get started is um, we're going to wash our hands. I'm going to show you how to chop down cabbage really easy. Okay, let me get my apron. Coffee is here. Hello, Miss Karen. How are you today? Welcome back in. Debbie Parker. Neek is here. Hello. All right, let's flip this camera around. I know y'all ready. Let's go. Hello, I see ya. Julie says hello. Gina, hope you had an awesome Valentine's Day. I did, thank you. I hope you had an awesome Valentine's Day. Thank you all for coming in and joining. If you're a new subscriber, let me know that you're a new subscriber so we can welcome you. And for the returning subscribers, welcome back. Welcome back. All right, so now, first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, get started washing my hands. I need the plug for the computer so the computer doesn't lose its juice. Okay. Thank you. Carol Kay, hello, hello, hello. Little Bit says, it's like saying happy belated birthday. Oh, if somebody says happy Valentine's Day the next day. Oh, my goodness. All right, so now let's go ahead and get our hands clean. Get your hands clean. We can ready to rock and roll. I don't know how long we're going to be on here today. 
because I do have plans on working out this evening. I want to leave myself a little space to rest between the time, you know, that I get off of the live, edit the live, you know, put some workout clothes on. I, I, I want to have a little space time. So we'll see how long I decide to stay on today, okay? Tea Cakes, hello. Eula is here. Hello. Latrice, how are you? Okay. So now I will be going over a couple of ingredients. Um, you can definitely use an onion in your cabbage if you'd like to, but you don't have to. I don't always use an onion in my cabbage. Sometimes I do, but we ain't going to do it today, okay? All right, so now I have smoked sausage. And this right here happens to be the type of sausage that I love. Sorry about that camera action. Hold on, guys. We need to fix something real quick. One second. Scoot back. Let go. Need to fix the camera real quick. Okay, hold on. We can get this fixed here. Shouldn't take me long. Okay. There we go. You need to be careful. We don't want that to fall again when we're recording, okay? Okay, okay. I'm back. Smoked sausage. Your favorite smoked sausage. And this just happens to be the kind that I love. And guess what? <clears throat> this comes in turkey. This comes in beef. Or and or you could use um, bacon. Turkey bacon beef bacon, pork bacon, whatever you like. I need to cough. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I will wash my hands after coughing. You got to do it. If you got a cough, it's okay, you know. Anymore, coughing is one of the worst things in the world that somebody could do, right? It's like insulting, isn't it? It's the worst thing. I, I dare somebody to cough when they're making my food or when they're next to me, you know, at the grocery store or something. Okay, so now the spices that we're using. We're going to use some salt and pepper. This is garlic and onion powder. And I have some red pepper flakes. We're going to use a little bit of sugar if you like. Okay, we're going to use either water or chicken broth, whichever one you love. We have the cabbage red potatoes if you want to use it, and bell peppers. And guess what? That's it. And this, is, this, this recipe, I love to make cabbage. I love to make cabbage because it's so quick. It's so quick and simple. You bet it is. So now, I have a little frying pan here. And you all have two options. So the two options for tending to the meat is you can decide that you want to fry up the sausage, you know, slice them and then fry them up on both sides. Okay, you understand? Right? And also, if you don't want to fry the sausage on both sides to give them a nice char to them, you can just slice or dice the sausage and throw them right in with the cabbage. Now, this recipe is not a fried cabbage recipe. I just have to be honest. I didn't grow up on fried cabbage. The cabbage that my dad made, and this is the type of cabbage that I love. My husband loves it too. It is kind of, I'd like to say, it's kind of more steamed than fried. You know, fried, you're going to need some oil, you know, some chicken grease or some bacon fat. We're, we're not doing that. The, the flavor comes from you you can use a little tiny bit of the oil that we you know from this and naturally oil that is going to come flavor is going to come from the sausage okay so the first thing that I want to do <clears throat> is let's go ahead and cut up our sausage is everybody doing okay if if not Oh, okay, she said it's not fried cabbage. Yes, 
not fried cabbage. So my dad growing up, he would make cabbage, oh, he would make cabbage a lot. And my dad, to me, my dad was the best cook ever. You know, and I still think he's an amazing cook. Uh, but he made cabbage, <clears throat> and he made it somewhat this way. Now, my dad told me a couple months back, he said, Nina, because he calls me Nina. He said, Nina, guess what? And I said, what? I thought he was going to tell me some big news. He said, I mean, he said, next time you purchase cabbage, he was so excited about this. He said, next time you purchase some cabbage, make sure it's organic. He said, that cabbage was the best cabbage I ever had. I said, what's it? So I'm on the phone with him. And he said, and you know what? He said, you know what kind of meat I use? Because when we, we was younger, he would use bacon. He said, I got the, um, he used Hillshire Farm beef sausage links that looks like this. He said it was the best ever. And I thought, okay, you know, okay, I have to try it. <laughs> so you see how I'm cutting my sausage down? And, yeah, he called me Nina. I know, I know, and I love my nickname. He called me Nina, and sometimes he would call me Woodstock. And every once in a while, even today, he'll call me Woodstock. Because I, I don't know if y'all know, Snoopy has the little yellow bird that hangs around his house. But he got three little strands of hair. My dad said, oh, my whole head was bald. Except for the top, he said, I had like a little cotton ball of hair. He said it was just like co a cotton ball. And, and so that's what made him call me. <laughs> that's what made him call me Woodstock. And I love that name, too. <laughs> All right, so now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the sausage, and then I'm going to show you how to cut the cabbage, okay? Put it right in that pan. Okay, I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil in the pan, and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a golden brown color. Sometimes it's okay if you get this a little dark on the outside, because the darker this sausage gets on both sides, the more flavor, okay? And we're trying to make as much flavor as we can into our cabbage, okay? All right, so I'm gonna grab a little tiny bit of oil. Let's go ahead and turn this pan on to like, ah, uh, just a medium. And it won't take hardly any time for this sausage to begin to cook up, okay? Everybody doing okay? So cute, says Miss Karen. <laughs> Yes, Woodstock. I, I love when he called me that. <laughs> and I'll tell y'all something funny that my mom used to call me. So now the reason why I like to say that it's funny, because when my mom called me this, I don't believe my dad called me this. I believe it was just my mom. She would say the queen bee, right? And my sister, she would say she ain't no queen bee. She ain't no queen. <laughs> That's what my sister would say. So my sister hated that name. She, she didn't like that name for me. <laughs> and I do. I think it's so funny. <laughs> but like I said, the, the two nicknames that I like is Nina and the Woodstock. <laughs> that is a funny story. Okay, let's get the sausages going. Don't even bother with them. Turn them on medium medium high just keep a good eye on them every once in a while go in <clears throat> and flip them over okay so now let's go ahead and address our cabbage sometimes your cabbage will have wilted leaves on the top or uh, the extra dark leaves you can use them but sometimes i feel like it's not even worth it it's just flimsy and i just get rid of it okay but if you want to use it you, you know it's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to do a number like this, okay? And I want you all to be careful, okay? I'm just going in, going right in, okay? I'm still holding on to the thing, and I didn't lose any digits, okay? So let's flip that baby over. Same thing. <clears throat> Sometimes you do have to put a little bit of elbow grease in to get this thing going, okay? So let's cut it right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's cut it right here. And this right here, believe it or not, is the core. The core, let's go ahead and get rid of it. It can be really, really tough. 
and it can sometimes take forever and a day to cook. So that middle core, and you'll notice the difference between <clears throat> the outer leaves and the core part. You'll know what part to get rid of. It's even hard to saw through. Now, when cutting up your cabbage to cook, um, you can cut it in big pieces. You can cut it in slices and dices. But here's how Tina Young likes to do it. I'm all excited today. I am. All right? Nothing special. But check me out. So we cut it, we're turning it, and now we're cutting it again. Now, <clears throat> I've washed off my cabbage before cutting it, but since it's cut now, we want to wash it off again. So now I have a clean bowl. Sausage is cooking up. We're going to take our cabbage, put it in this bowl. We're going to be rinsing our cabbage off with cold water, okay? You don't need to wash it off with hot water. You know, you just want to make sure that there's no sand, no little buggies, you know, because that can sometimes happen because cabbage grows outside, you know? <clears throat> All right, one second here. got to fix the situation. I, I have some plugs here. And everything keeps getting unplugged. It's okay. No worries, because I'm going to wash my hands when I'm done. I don't want nobody freaking out. I don't want the YouTube police to freak out on me. She didn't wash her hands. It's okay. I'm going to wash them. <laughs> Relax. All right. Hands are nice and clean once again. Anytime you have to do something other than cooking in the kitchen, you turn around and wash your hands to keep your loved ones safe from bacteria because, you know, my cords could have bacteria on them, you know, germs on them. So to prevent that, just wash your hands, you know? All right, so now we're going back in. We're going to chop up some more cabbage just like so. All right, my family totally loves cabbage. Oh my goodness. You hear me? Oh wait, and I love it. I love it. I love what I love about the type of cabbage that I make versus fried. With fried, you don't put any liquid in. You put fat, bacon, bacon grease, um, sausage grease, oil. You know, you know, that's the, the, the wetness that you'll have with your cabbage. With this cabbage, you actually have a liquid that's delicious. It has nutrients and it has a lot of flavor. And I love it. I call it my pot liquor. As if, you know, I was making greens. Sometimes I call my green, my green liquid, when I make a big pot of greens, I say, oh, this is that great, delicious pot liquor. This makes a pot liquor as well. Yes, okay, so Sonia makes a great point. She says you can use the water or chicken broth. Terrell, how are you? Thank you for coming in and joining us. Welcome to all the new subscribers once again. If you're new, come on in. Uh, uh, tell us your name so we can welcome you. And uh, if I don't get to see your name, welcome. Welcome to the returning subscribers. I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. Absolutely, I do. So now, for my family, one cabbage head is, is just not enough. Pop liquor and, oh, pot liquor and cornbread is delicious. You bet it is. And so, like I said, I didn't feel like making cornbread today, but I got some. Oh, yeah, I got some. So we're going to do the same thing here. Be careful with your digits. You don't want to cut them off. So if all possible, close your digits in. Don't have, you don't want to have them out like this when you're cutting. Okay, so do this. Even if you're cutting an onion or a bell pepper, you put your digits in, your fingers. You know, that way you, you, you don't risk cutting yourself, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn around and we are going to... Uh, let, let, let's go ahead and flip the sausage. Let, let's just see if we're getting some color. Because I tell you what, it sure, it sure smell good. Oh, it smell good. My goodness. And see, all of that, I put a tiny bit of oil in there, right? We can use that oil. 
that's fine, but we're not putting a whole lot of oil in it to make it fried cabbage, okay? If you want to put that little tiny bit in there, that's fine. It's going to be more flavor, you know. We are getting a little bit of color onto the sausages, but they need to cook a little longer, okay? So there's that outer part again that kind of annoys me. I'm getting rid of it. Okay, so while I'm cutting the cabbage, I'll turn around and look at some messages and see how everybody's doing. You learned something new today. Hi, Drew. How are you? Thank you for coming back in and joining us. Hello, Jamie. Ron says. Natalie, hello. My holy king, it says looping. Here, let me see. My holy king, I see you uh, watch the video for the, Mar listen, the Marsala cooking one. The, not, I wanted to say Marsala cooking one. The Marsala chicken that I made today was absolutely amazing. I kept going back into the pan, tasting the gravy. The gravy was so good, and that chicken was so stinking tender. You hear me? Oh, wait. Trust me when I tell you, you want to make that recipe. It's easy, doesn't cost anything. And the whole family, even the kids, they love it. And so now there's going to be people out there that's going to say, I'm not going to try it because there's wine in it. Do I have to put wine in it? You don't have to. And, you know, just call it your chicken and gravy. <laughs> Absolutely, you know. Okay, so you're enjoying the channel. Okay, let me see who that is. Enjoying the channel. Where are you? Oh, he said, you hear me? Um, well, I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. I think I may have missed your message of who you are, but I'm so glad. That's what I'm here for. Guys, when I come on here, I pray that everyone has a great day, that you all have a great time, and that I'm able to bless you all with an amazing recipe that you can take home to your family, friends, and loved ones. Okay, so now what's the next, next step, Gina? Uh, well, first, I'm going to turn around. There's people that hate when I talk in third person, and I love to do it, so I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> I'm going to keep on doing it. All right, listen, I'm going to look in the messages and see, are you all ready for me to move on? If you're ready for me to move on, I'm ready to show you all the next step, okay? And the next step is just going to be that we take our cabbage, rinse that baby off real good, okay? That's it. And, and wait for our sausage to cook up a little bit. Everybody doing okay? Thank you, Ron. I will. I will. DJ Ron, hello. Beautiful flowers, hello. Eula, hello. Taking notes, Denise says yes. Natalie, how are you? I'm fine. You're doing great? Okay, that's great, Drew. Okay, so uh, Debbie says yes, we're ready. Little bit, how was your Valentine's? It was great. It was great. We had a great... We had a great day. Thank you for asking. I hope you had a great Valentine's. Okay, so listen, we'll go ahead. Y'all ready to move on, says Sonia? We're going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so now what we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to take my cabbage. I'm going to put it into the colander, and I'm just going to rinse it in cold water. And then I want to show you the pan that I'm cooking my cabbage in. My pan is my handy dandy wok. It's nothing special. It just happens to be a stainless steel flat bottom wok. Okay, so that's what we're using. I use such a big vessel because, a big pan, because uh, I feel like I need the room when cooking cabbage. Although the cabbage will shrink down, just like if you were making, you know, collard greens or something. So come in and take a look at the sausage. I want to show you some great color that we're finally getting. I'm so happy with that. All right, this is amazing. Oh yeah, and it smells so good. All right, you might have to change tripods since that camera keeps falling on you, okay? We don't want that to keep happening. Let's see, let me see. 
the back of this is open. It's still open. You may have to, you may have to do something to fix that. Okay, so let's clean the cabbage off. I'm going to go ahead and turn my sausage off because I'm so happy with the color that I've achieved. It's really starting to extract some great flavor into the pan. And that little bit of oil that's in there, I'm going to go ahead and use it. You bet I am. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Oh, way it's looking good and it's smelling. It smells like breakfast in here. Yes, it does. All right. So now I'm going to drain my cabbage. And then we're going to put the cabbage in the pan. I'm just right here. I'm not going too far. Okay. Cabbage is rinsed. I want to put the cabbage into my, oh, there we go. Ooh, that baby heavy. My goodness. Okay. We're moving in the right direction. Okay, I kind of got a mess everywhere. Where'd the cabbage go? Okay, is there any more cabbage on the counter? Okay, so now guess what we're going to do next? We're going to turn around. We're going to take the sausage, put the sausage with that little bit of grease. Now listen, for some reason, just let's just say for some reason, for some reason if your sausage let off a whole lot of grease or you put a lot of oil in the pan to make the sausage. Um, I want you to take a paper towel, blot out some of that oil because we don't want to digest a whole lot of oil, right? We just, you just don't want to. But if you got a little bit of oil like I do, then it's safe to go ahead and add it, okay? It's just a little bit. But let me show you because I, I think that showing you all sometimes is better than just telling someone because that's the type of uh, learner I am. I'm a visual learner. I like to see it done, you know, versus being told. So if you had a whole lot of oil and you wanted to sop it up, you could use a clean paper towel just like so, sop up that extra oil and then discard of it, okay? That, that didn't even make it into the trash can. My goodness, look at this. Just pour it right on top for now, okay? Get all that goodness out the pan. How about that? Uh-huh. Ooh-wee! All right, I want to rinse the pan down a little bit. Listen, if I have not said, I hope that y'all are having a great day today. I really do. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope y'all are having a good day today. Okay? So now, the heat that we're going to be cooking our cabbage on. Let's talk about the heat. It's very important that you don't cook cabbage up too high. Cooking cabbage up too high, you, you need to uh, straighten. Cooking cabbage up too high is, ho hold on guys. There we go. <clears throat> Cooking the cabbage up on too high of a heat will make your cabbage real mushy. I'm not into that. I don't want my cabbage mushy and you don't want it mushy either. So the heat that we're gonna use, medium, medium high, if you keep an eye on it. I want you to keep a good eye on it. Cooking it up too high, it'll get mushy, okay? So please, always keep that in mind. If you, let's see. Looks like a funeral in the background. I, I don't know about that. I don't agree. It looks like it was Valentine's Day yesterday. How about that? All right. So we're going to do some salt and pepper. I have salt and pepper in here. You use as much salt or as least salt as you would like to use. A little bit of red pepper flakes for us here at the Young's house, but by all means, you don't have to use the red pepper flakes. Garlic and onion powder, okay, and a nice amount. Now, several times, maybe two or three times, you'll see me go back in and re-season. 
after we taste it. I'm even going to put a pinch of sugar in there, maybe a pinch or two. But if you don't want to use it, absolutely, you don't have to. Okay, so now it's time to decide whether you would like to use chicken broth or water. For years and years, I used water, and still to today, I use water because it's delicious. And you can always season it to make it taste better. But today, I figured I'm going to go ahead and use some chicken broth. So that's what we're using here. Okay, and literally, so I'm going to put about this much in. Okay, can y'all see that? to where it comes up this much in the pan. And that's it, okay? And I can see it. It's about here, if you can see my finger. Okay, it's not up too high because um, uh, a lot of cabbage is made up from, of water. It has water in it. So as it cooks down, it will release water into our pan as well. So while we're cooking, you're gonna see that the liquid is gonna come up even more, that's why. Okay, so I just want to clean this counter down just a little bit. And then I want to talk about if you decided that you wanted to put potatoes into your cabbage, okay? If you wanted to put potatoes into the cabbage, you would never, ever put it in right now. Guess why? Guess why? Because um, the potatoes don't take long to cook. Okay, so what we want to do, and we don't want them to be mush by the time that our cabbage is done. So putting them in too early will create mushy potatoes. You want them to still have some integrity and still be intact, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you wash them off, of course. I've washed mine off ahead of time. So come on in and take a look at the potatoes. And if you have a small one, you don't even have to cut it, okay? I like to cut mines down like this because it's pretty, okay? And then like that. But like I said, if it's a smaller one, you don't even have to cut it. And with these potatoes, believe it or not, the skin is delicious and it's so thin you don't have to peel them, okay? So this is how I like to do the potatoes if we were to put potatoes in. Now, what I'll do, I'll put maybe two potatoes in uh, just to show you, you know, how they would turn out, okay? So we have some potatoes that is cut. And what we're going to do right now is I want to cut some bell peppers, okay? And the bell peppers really is just for decoration purposes because I'm on a cooking show. And I want everything that I make to look beautiful. Now, if you love the flavor of bell peppers, that's another reason to add bell peppers in. Okay, especially the red and green, you know, it get, then you get kind of fancy, you know. Um, but you don't need a whole lot. We're going to put a little bit of the bell peppers in now, and then later towards the end of the cooking process, we'll put some more in. Because these bell peppers that we're going to put in right now, oh, they're just going to cook down into flavor town. You hear me? All right, so I'm going to begin to put some in, just like so, so it can let off some amazing flavor into the pan. And then I'll cut up a little bit, and we can put it in maybe the last 10, 15 minutes of the cooking process. That way, because that batch won't cook down into Flavorland. They'll still have some texture, okay? So now, let's go ahead and address the red bell pepper, same thing. But don't overwhelm it with bell peppers. Yes, DJ says, DJ Ron says, the red potatoes cook really good. You bet they do. Absolutely. And they're going to taste good and hearty in there. Like I said, here at the Young's house, where lately we've been watching our carbs, so um, I didn't have intentions on putting the potatoes in. If I put a couple in there for you guys, it would just be for, you know, just to show you all the perfect time to put it in. Okay, and what they would look like when they're done. Okay, look, look at this beautiful red and a dark green that's going to shine through in your cabbage if you decided to use the bell peppers. Oh, absolutely. I'm excited. Listen, somebody let me know in the chat that you're having a good time. If you're having a good time, let me know. 
If you're enjoying Gina Young's live, give a thumbs up. Absolutely. So you said I use red potatoes in my seafood boil. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So Denise says, I, I love cabbage. I love it. <laughs> Donna Marie says hello to my holy king. Good time. Like, like JJ. Good, th that type of good times. Okay. Use lettuce. No, you can't. The lettuce will wilt and it will be a horrible mess. The lettuce will melt and it'll be a horrible mess. You, Latika, you said you want a big plate. <laughs> okay. Why you say you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I think it's a part of slang that I like to use a uh, little bit. Because when I'm talking, y'all know what I mean. That's why, that's why I say, you know what I mean? Great time as always. That's great. I love bell peppers. They are, they are delicious. You know, Sonia, I could turn around and I can make a dip and just take bell peppers, like if it's the holiday, make a vegetable tray and cut bell peppers and, and just dip them in like a ranch or an onion dip and just really enjoy them. You're having a great time. Okay. Mildred, how you doing today? Sonia says, I'm having a great time even though I'm not cooking. Okay. It's okay because I know when we cook together, Sonia, you have such an amazing time. And so I'm grateful for that, you know? I want to wipe my count counter down. I got something on my counter here. I can't stand a mess, so I gotta address it right now. So you see I have bell peppers and my ramekin that I'm going to put in towards the end of the cooking process. I got all my spices over here that I plan on using again. Okay, so now, Linda Smith, hello, how are you, Zadi, hello. You love to just munch on bell peppers. Absolutely. Yes, it is. St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Now, Latika, do you put green on? Because here's what I do. Here's what I do, Latika. I'm so serious. I don't put green on. It, 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 here, here's the thing. If I happen to have green on, then that's great. If I just happen to put it on that day and, you know, I just put it on. But I don't plan to wear green on say thank you Kathy Kathy thank you I appreciate it I don't plan to put green on and I dare you to come pinch me don't come up don't touch me no I don't have green on don't touch me <laughs> shamrock shake oh yes I I have not tasted it but I would love to <laughs> I know, I know, I could be silly sometimes. I wear green on St. Patrick's Day, says Valencia, okay. If I lose connection, it's not your fault, Gina. It's mine, you out there in the streets. Okay, you be careful, okay. My oldest daughter's birthday is on St. Patrick's Day. Is that right? Oh, that's really nice. Okay, so listen. When I'm cooking my cabbage, I like to cover it. I just like to cover it, okay? It's gonna help the cooking process, and it's okay to have that extra steam, okay? So if you don't have the lid, which I have the lid, but I'm not gonna go searching for it. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of foil, and we're gonna cook this down, okay? And the next time we come in and check on it, uh, we'll re-season it, well, we're going to um, stir those vegetables and those meat pieces into the cabbage, kind of get things moving around a little bit. But for right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come around. I'm going to be able to read messages while we wait on our cabbage to cook, if that's okay with you all. I'm coming around. <laughs> Good evening, Hope. Hello. All right. 
Hold on, guys. <clears throat> so listen, somebody tell me that this was simple. Oh, you bet it was so simple. Chicken Marsala, wow, yes. I hate to be pinched on St. Pat. That's what I said. Don't come over here pinching me on St. Patrick's Day because I didn't put green on. I don't even know if I have Irish in me. <laughs> That's how I look at it. Don't you dare come pinching me. <laughs> I'm silly, and I am so silly today. I'm excited. I'm excited for this recipe, y'all. Gina, can the cabbage be cooked with other type of meat or can it? Let's see. I, I will, Ron. <laughs> or can it be cooked without meat? Great question. Okay, the cabbage can be cooked without meat. Oh, your marriage name is green. Okay. Uh, the cabbage can be cooked without meat. And um, you could use the chicken broth for flavor vegetable broth for flavor um, you could uh, use different meats like a turkey bacon a beef bacon um, a beef sausage you like that chicken apple sausage whatever type meat you like it doesn't have to be pork it can be turkey bacon you turn around and fry it up and then chop it up and throw it in there and guess what it's gonna be so good you hear me or turkey sausage. I purposely brought some of the Eckridge turkey sausage so I could show y'all. So when I make my way, let me take the microphone off. So when, I, sorry guys, so when I make my way back around there, I'll show you the turkey sausage, okay? I'll show, hold on. Okay, I turned the microphone off. I'll show y'all the turkey sausage so you can see it just in case you wanted to use that, you know, for your cabbage. You, you would love it. Doesn't have to be the pork. You know, a, a lot of people kind of stare down on the pork, and I, I can understand that. Tracy, how are you? Maya's Coins, hello. Kendra, hello. K Coffee says, hey, lady. Or Maya saying, hey, hey. Hey, lady to K Coffee, okay? Okay, a little bit says, call me Ashton, okay? Gina, please make beef yak yak. I don't know how to say it. You're gonna have to tell me what it is. And then I'll research on how to make it. And then once I figure out how to make it, I'll, I'll do a video for you. Call me hungry. I know. <laughs> uh, have you ever just washed the cabbage? Okay, hold on. Have you ever just washed the cabbage and cooked it without adding water? Very good, because wash the water, because uh, the wash with water makes your juice. Absolutely. So what I was explaining, maybe before you came in, was... There's a couple of different types of ways you can make cabbage. Uh, I grew up on this type of cabbage that I'm showing you today. You don't have to put any liquid in the cabbage at all. But here at the Young's house, we like that pot liquor that is formed when you use a chicken broth or a water. I like for my cabbage to be steamed versus the fried cabbage. The fried cabbages are used, uh, the fried cabbages get a little bit um, moisture from bacon fat, ch uh, chicken grease, uh, sausage fat, and things like that. And then you fry it up without liquid. I like mines to be steamed and have that juice in the bottom because I like to drink the juice. So you got a couple different ways you can make it. I do have a video. I have a video that I recently did. When I say recently, it might be a couple of months old where I showed you all how to fry cabbage. So if you want to see that video, absolutely you can check it out, okay? I uh, see this person here says, me too, I could drink the juice. Uh-huh, and this is Miss Luscious. 
I, I think that's your name. Saj, how you doing today? Oh, okay, Gina, you missed my important question above. Okay, let me see, Derek. Jewel, hello. Uh, I think he's asking, let's see. Did he ask, can you cook it in a pressure cooker? Uh, if you did, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, so you don't have to have a pressure cooker. Let me see, I keep, to do cabbage. I always thought you have to use one for it. No, I have never in my life cooked cabbage anything but in a pot, either in a pot like this and or a frying pan. Um, if someone is cooking cabbage, in a pressure cooker, they want their cabbage done in like five minutes. It does not take a long time to cook cabbage. So if you have at least a half an hour, 35 minutes to cook the cabbage, then, you know, that's really all you need. So pressure cookers are meant to take the time away from things like if I got a big pork roast or beef roast and I want to cut the time down from two hours to maybe 45 minutes. Okay, that's what a pressure cooker is made for and it tenderizes meats. I feel like the pressure cooker, if you were to put the cabbage in a pressure cooker, it would turn it into mush. <laughs> you said, but if you pronounce it, liquor, <laughs> liquor, <laughs> right, <laughs> pot liquor, <laughs> Gina, a weird question, once the banana pepper in the empty jar, okay, hold on, once the banana, oh, hold on, it's funny because as I hold the message, more messages pop up and then I lose your message, hold on, okay, once the banana pepper in the empty once the banana pepper pepper in the <laughs> I can't read it. Okay, hold on. I'm having a hard time here. Gina, weird question. Once the banana pepper in the jar, empty what you can with the banana pepper juice, or are you not sure? Gina, weird question. Once the banana pepper in the jar, empty what you cook. with the banana pepper juice, or are you not sure? I'm not sure of how you're wording the question. So um, if you can word it a different way that I can understand, then I, I, I'm, I'm glad, I would love to answer it, but I don't understand what I'm reading. I'm trying to get the word right a little bit. I couldn't get it out. I couldn't get it out. I'm like, oh Lord, what, what? <laughs> You're glad I'm feeling better. Oh, you're glad Alan is feeling better. I'm glad Alan is feeling better. Absolutely. Okay, Eula, did you see what I said about your birthday? Okay, let me see, Eula. Oh, your surgery went good. That's great, Alan. Okay, let's see. I never use gingerbread anywhere. I never see gingerbread anywhere. Can you make some, please? Absolutely. I, I could probably make some gingerbread cookies. Rhonda's message. Okay, let me see what we got going on. The people that I'm missing your message, you might want to type it in again. Okay, what I'm going to do, uh, type your message in again if I missed it, okay? Type it back in. Now, I don't suggest cooking it in the pressure cooker, Sonia. Yeah, that is interesting. You just took a deep breath. Cabbage and corn. Oh, yes, Heidi. Cabbage and corned beef is delicious. Okay, Gina. I have a empty banana pepper jar. And I kept the juice from it. What type of food be good to use with the juice? Guess what? A roast. A roast. If you have banana pepper juice, if you can pick up, pick up a beef roast, and you can pour that 
uh, juice, not all of it, pour half of it into your beef roast that's cooking and it will be simple and delicious, okay? Okay, Drew needs me, okay. Sod said I'm always drunk, oh my goodness. I'm not, guess what? Cause I don't drink. I don't drink. My goodness. Uh-uh. Hold on guys. Oh yes, Mildred, the uh, a lot of people will put, or if they're making like a, a pulled pork, you'll see them turn around. Guess who likes to use banana peppers and banana pepper juice in their foods? The uh, Pioneer Woman. What's her name? Reed Drummond. She likes to use banana peppers, uh, uh, Reed Drummond, on the Food Network with the red hair. The Pioneer Woman. She likes to put banana peppers in her pulled pork or her pulled beef and roast beef. She does it all the time. And if you look up some of her videos, you'll see her do that. Uh-huh, yes, yes, that's true. And it is, that's why I said, I, I knew, I, that's why I said, if you word it a different way, I'll, I'll love to answer. One day I'll have to do that for you. And because they say it puts so much flavor into meats that are that's cooked like in the oven or in a crock pot or something like that, you know. Uh, can you make a cabbage soup? <laughs> Judy Young style lip gloss. Um, sure. I just to be honest, I've never made a cabbage soup, but I could I could put together some stuff. One ingredient that I think I would definitely put in there would be corn. I also feel like I would put some lima beans in there. You know, the frozen green kind. <laughs> Get out of here, Ron. <laughs> Get out of here, Ron. He says a lot of people. <laughs> Gina, I made a Dorito casserole yesterday. Okay, let's see. Let's see. It turned out excellent. Oh, great. Okay, so listen. It's funny you say that, Derek Eats, because Mildred was asking me about a Dorito casserole. And remember, Mildred, I told you that I think I made one. So Derek is just now saying he made my Dorito casserole. He said it was excellent. So now, uh, Mildred, you can make it. Derek just said it was delicious. Oh. So this person right here, Kathy saying banana peppers is good in potato salad. Guess what? I would not knock it before I tried it. It sounds like I would love banana peppers in, uh, in potato salad or even macaroni salad. <laughs> you said, okay, I'm going to do it. He said, yeah, Derek Eads says, yeah, I'm proud of it. I still got leftovers. Oh, that's great. I love to hear that. I love when y'all tell me, you know, hey, Gina, listen, I made something of yours and I love it. I, I Listen, I'm not a person that loves hot stuff. I just am not a fan of the hot stuff, you know. Uh, but if, if I can buy... The banana peppers that's mild and they're not real hot. I like that tang that they have. Especially if I put it on a lunch meat sandwich or like a homemade sub. Listen, here. Banana, banana peppers are delicious. Uh-oh, Mildred said, I'm going to make it. I couldn't see it in potato salad, says Miss Karen. It, it does sound, it, it sounds like it, it might be good. If you chop it up as if it was, use it in replace of the relish. Give me that little tank. Use it in replace of the relish. Think of it like that, Miss Karen. Okay, so Alan says, are you going to make shamrock shake? 
St. Patrick's Day? Uh, maybe, we'll see. Um, uh, I was actually thinking about making the corn, uh, corn beef and cabbage for, um, for that day, for St. Patrick's Day. Maybe I'll have to make the shamrock shake for y'all. Uh, I'll just have to do that. But y'all gotta watch the videos. Y'all gotta watch, I'll I be putting out some amazing videos, but I feel like more of y'all like to watch the lives with Gina Young. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But I, I'll do the shamrock shake. How about I do that for St. Patrick's Day? And uh, in the video form, I think that'll be a lot of fun because I'd love to try it. Yes, you do, Ron. Ron says I watch both. Yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you, Valencia. Hey, listen, and if you can, so I know, uh, you know, who, who's watching send me a message you know and say hey Gina you know whatever and um, Dorothy says I, I love both okay <laughs> thank you oh you said you love cabbage and roast Ivan is here hello peanut punch I don't know what that is they serve green beer here is that right can you make cabbage, rice, and cabbage with steak? You bet. Yes. Absolutely. What's in the shamrock shake? So now, if I were to make a shamrock shake, I don't know how it's made. I'm going to have to see how it's made because I've never made it. I've never tried it. But let me tell you what I would do before even researching it. So I definitely would have some cool some whipped cream and i would have a cherry for the top i would turn listen i would turn around <clears throat> i would use vanilla ice cream i would use the pistachio pudding that's the mint green color i would blend the two together uh -huh. Uh -huh. oh yeah and i would put some uh, mint flavored extract in there blend that all up put whipped cream on top with the cherry. I feel like that's how I would make it. Now, I don't even know how it's made. I don't even know how it's made now. So we'll see. It does sound delicious, right? And it's gonna be like a mint green color, you know? All right, so now we need to check on our cabbage. Let's give it a nice stir around. Stir in the meat, stir in those veggies, get those spices moving around. Because right now, because when I first I put everything into the pan. You could see it was overflowing. So if I would have went and stirred it, everything would have fell out my pan. So now I feel like things have cooked down a little bit. I'm really going to be able to get into the pan and um, move everything around. Let's go check on the food. You love the shamrock shake. Okay, Latika. All right, let's come in and check on. Okay, I'm turning the microphones back on. <clears throat> Can y'all hear me? I'm gonna, I gotta wash my hands. Got the microphone back on. Let's get my hands washed. Somebody said something. Ever made stuffed cabbage rolls? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Listen, I have to be honest with you. It's, I'm washing my hands. 95% of the time, if you're looking for something, Jeannie Young has got it already on that channel. You hear me? Absolutely, I do. I have amazing cabbage roll recipes that you, you want to make it for your family. You hear me? And if you don't, you're going to miss out. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. So I'm going to open it away from me so the steam can go that way. Because there's nothing like a steam burn. It's not funny. Okay. So I'm going to do it in such a way that steam can come out that way. Okay. Here we go. All right. How about it?
Give a thumbs up on the way in. Come on in, everybody. Let me show you what we got. Hey, we are rocking and rolling here at the Young's house. Okay, mix those spices in. I'm going to go in and season a second time. I always do. Okay, I need you all to trust me on this, that this is what you're looking for. It's delicious, and that juice down in there is absolutely amazing. All right, so now I'm going in with salt and pepper, a little bit more onion and garlic powder, okay, and um, I want this to cook up for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, after 10 minutes, I'm going to come back and think about putting the potatoes and the other set of bell peppers into the pan, okay? But like I said, more than anything, you don't want to put those potatoes in too early because they'll turn into mush, okay? But like I said, here at the Young's house, we don't want the potatoes, so I'm only going to put just a few in, but I do want you to see the consistency that the potato's going to turn out, how soft it's going to get, and how it stays intact. Now, once you put potatoes into your cabbage, the way that you stir your cabbage is going to be different. I want you to do a folding motion like this versus like this. Guess why? Because you'll break up your potatoes, okay? So be gentle with it and just fold it like this once the potatoes get in so you don't break them all up. So everything's looking good. We're going to let this cook for 10 more minutes. We're going to come back and we're going to put the extra bell peppers in a couple of potatoes, and then it's going to cook for a little bit longer, and dinner basically will be served. Now, there's one spice that I told you all that I was going to put in, and I'm going to grab it now, which I love to put sugar in mine. It's not to make it sweet. I promise you, I know, I know. But if you're that person, you might say, nope, uh -uh, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, Gina. You know, if you just say you're not going to do it, then it's okay. It ain't going to taste like mine, you know. But the sugar is going to give you that mm, mommy factor. Make them say, mm, mommy, where do you get this recipe from? You got it from Gina Young, and that umami factor is always a little secret, which is a little bit of sugar in there. I'm going to grab some right now. Gonna grab just a little bit. Like I said, one or two pinches is good. And that's it. Not to make it sweet. Trust me. You trust me, right? Trust me. Ooh, that's gonna be so good tonight when I get hungry. And the thing about cabbage is it's healthy. So if I wanna eat it tonight at midnight, which is not good for me. <laughs> Eating after, eating after 7 o'clock really is not good for you. But if I get hungry, I'm going to have me some cabbage, and I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> All right. I'm coming around. Let's put the lid back on, let it cook, right, maybe another 10 minutes. And then when we come back, potatoes go in. The rest of the bell peppers go in, okay? We'll wait on the potatoes and the bell peppers to cook, and dinner is served. You already got some cornbread, or you're making cornbread, and you might even be making white rice. When I was younger, my dad would serve cabbage over top of a bed of rice. I don't know if it was because the two go together perfectly, like peas and carrots, or if he wanted to stretch the meal because there was a lot of kids, you know, so, but both of them works. It stretches the meal and it makes the meal delicious. We're not doing the rice today. <clears throat> 10 minutes, thank you. Hungrier than a hippos. I know, I know, I know. Oh, whole okra. I, I'm a true fan of okra. There's people out there that don't like it, but I, I love okra. So now, uh, make sure this is on medium-high. Medium-high heat, okay. 
Yours should be looking just like mine. I'm turning the microphone off once again. Y'all should be able to hear me. We're back. Everybody doing okay? Hold on, let me get this microphone. Okay. Susan! You don't like Oprah? Oh my goodness. And you know, I totally understand. <laughs> yes, Ron, don't don't do it, y'all. If you didn't make it like I made it, don't 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 go out in this world saying that it's Gina Young style. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> it's so funny because I, I get people do this all the time. So uh, let's just say I made something delicious. And in order for you to make this recipe, whatever it is, <clears throat> you need all the ingredients. You gotta make it exactly like I make it or else. People will, people will message me and they say, oh, Gina, I made your so-and-so, right? And then they'll say, but I didn't have so-and-so, one of the main ingredients. And I'm thinking, no, no. <laughs> Don't, do, don't you tell nobody that's Jeannie Young's recipe and you didn't use all the ingredients. That's one thing that drives me nuts. Now, if I'm showing you how to cook something and, and I'm giving you different options, like I told Mildred, absolutely. You can make uh, this cabbage without meat or with turkey bacon and something like that. Then that's when I'm giving you different options. But if I didn't say that and I didn't tell you <laughs> to, to leave out the most important ingredient and then you come email me talking about oh I made your so and so I'm like oh lord but I didn't have the main ingredient I, I just get sick inside <laughs> like oh uh huh and I hope they didn't say it was Gina Young's <laughs> I get nuts about that <laughs> Y'all laughing at me. I'm so serious. Yeah, yeah. She said I made the I made I made the cabbage without the cabbage. That's the type of messages I get. Yes, I'm like, whoa. They didn't use three of the main ingredients. I didn't have so and so, so and so, and so and so. But I made it. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, you like fried okra with ketchup. Okay, that's interesting. I think I like fried okra just by itself. You know, I, I really do. I like it by itself. Shay, how are you? Thank you for coming in and joining us today. Monopoly, hello. Oh, you like okra anyway. I do too. I do too. I, I, uh, this place that I, we've been going to lately, it's a Caribbean res restaurant. They have like an okra soup. And um, I want to get it, but I don't want to get it and be disappointed. I'm okay with it being, you know, a little, uh, what do you call it? What, what do they call it? Slimy? I'm okay with that. But I don't want it to be cooked with fish. Because um, some... Like, I know some African uh, people will make, like, uh, when they do the okra stew, or, or what is it called? My goodness, I can't think of it. Egusi, okay? It has a fish in it. And it's made with dried fish. And the fish flavor is so pungent. I don't like it. <clears throat> and so I feel like I want to call them and say, I want to try your okra soup but or your okra stew. But is it made with dried fish? If it's made with dried fish, I don't want it. <laughs> but I want to try it so bad. So I'm, I think I might call them ahead of time. Oh, see? Okay, so it is made, okay, it's called supa. 
Oh, see, yeah. I don't want it with the dry fish. Celebrating your 25th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Okay, Xander. That's amazing. Oh, wow. If I don't get to say happy anniversary, happy anniversary. That's beautiful. Let's see. You said, let me get my gas mask. What did he say? Oh, Lord. What did he say, Saj? Oh, Lord. The fun you said the funk is coming in. <laughs> <clears throat> I've been having to clear my throat lately. I don't know what's going on. Oh, you said fried okra with rice and some daps. A hot sauce is delicious. That, that sounds good. He's taking his shoes off. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, allergic to something, Gina. Am I allergic to something? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I, oh, but I tell you what, what a great question. Remember I told you all my doctor told me to take the um, uh, Mucinex in the pill form, and that day I took it, I was sick that first day. I've been taking it ever since. I ain't got sick afterwards, but I do feel like it could possibly be breaking up the phlegm in my chest, and that's what's making me having to clear my throat. So we'll see. So I've been taking the Mucinex in the pill form every day, but it's making me clear my throat. I'm thinking that's what the issue is, because I don't have a cold. I'm not allergic to nothing, you know. You're going to have a little party for your dad's birthday. Oh, that's great. That's it, Shay. Uh-huh, yep. Shay, you know what? I remember when you first came to my channel and you started watching in 2017. I remember that your name was diff a different name. And I remember when you changed it to Shay. And I'm so grateful to have you on the channel. You've been watching for a long time. So thank you so much. Oh, you need a meatloaf sandwich. That sounds good. You bet it does. I love a meatloaf sandwich too. The meatloaf has to be cold, right? Now, for the person that's saying that, does the meatloaf have to be cold, left over from the, you know, the day before? Meatloaf sandwich, cold, slice it. A little bit of Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip this time. Miracle Whip, and if you wanted to put a fresh piece of onion on there and just eat it on a sandwich, it's the best thing since sliced bread, right? I love a cold meatloaf sandwich. Let's see, okay, somebody says meatloaf. Meatloaf sandwich on rye bread, Heidi? Oh my goodness. Okay, so Gina, look up the peanut punch recipe. It's easy peasy. I'm gonna look it up. Gina, have you ever cooked canned Spam? Absolutely I have. So Gina, my youngest daughter asked me to make some more sweet potato pie. She took a piece of pie to her boss. She called me and said she loved it. I told my daughter, it's Gina Young's recipe. Absolutely. That's great. In the pictures, y'all, Mildred made some sweet potato pies. It was during the holiday. She sent me a picture of her pies. I couldn't tell the difference between my pies and hers. And she said they were delicious. I knew they were because the picture she sent me was gorgeous. So if y'all want an easy, quick, delicious um, dessert recipe, try my sweet potato pie. You'll love it. Try my pumpkin pie. Yeah, uh-huh. Yes, I see it. Yep. Thank you for all the years of cooking. Absolutely, Shay. I love me some Spam. Now, now see, my husband likes when I make, you're welcome, Mildred. When I make <clears throat> the Spam here at the Young's house, I'm usually making a Hawaiian breakfast where I slice the Spam, I fry it, get it brown on both sides. I caramelize some onions, I make white rice and scrambled eggs. 
he goes nuts over it. And you put soy sauce on top of everything. He, lo he might like that breakfast more than he likes any breakfast. But he really, really loves it. I remember the first time I cooked cabbage, I boiled a lettuce. Oh, okay, thinking you boiled a lettuce thinking it was cabbage. It was like, where's the cabbage? Uh-huh. I totally understand that. I do understand that. Because a lot of people, you know, and it's just an honest mistake. You know, it's an honest mistake. Because um, it, sometimes it is hard to distinguish the cabbage and the lettuce when you first begin to cook. Hey, listen, it's time to take on our cabbage. Hold on, let me turn the microphone back on. All right. Okay, hold on, the sound's gonna leave. It's gonna come back in. I'm getting ready to plug the camera in. And I'm gonna attach. Okay, you can hear me. I love wilted lettuce. Wilted lettuce, uh, remember, I made the lemon chicken for y'all, or the Warsu guy, and we put the hot chicken over top of the fresh bed of iceberg lettuce, and it is astonishing. You hear me? Ooh. What, ha what would happen if your lettuce head, instead of cabbage, it, it would just cook down to nothing, you know. All right, let me wash my hands. Always got to wash the hands, okay? Always got to wash the hands. Okay, I'm going to take this baby off. Pulling it away from me. See the steam going away from me? I don't want a, a, a burn. All right, those of you that want to put potatoes in, Listen, come on in, come on in. Come here, come here. All right, I'm going to put a couple in for y'all that love potatoes. But like I said, I didn't have, I didn't want to use potatoes, but I'm just going to do this just for you guys. Put those extra bell peppers in. Uh-huh. And it's not going to take any time for those potatoes to cook, these bell peppers to cook up, kind of mix them in a little bit. I'm going to keep those potatoes visible where I can see them. Okay, but what I want to do, okay, it's very important. When I'm making cabbage, I like to season them maybe two to three times because I got to make sure uh, uh, extra water has released into our pan. So we got a nice amount of liquid in here, and since we have more liquid, I need to make sure that it tastes good. So what am I going to do? I'm going to taste the liquid for seasoning. If I'm happy with the seasoning, then guess what? We don't have to reseason. But if I'm not, then I want to think about what do I need? I might not need more salt. I might just need some more garlic and onion powder, okay? So I'm going in for the juice, and you can look at that juice and tell how much flavor's in there. Oh, wait. And remember, we put a little bit of oil. Come over this way so we can get out of the steam. We put a little bit of oil that, you know, the, the sausage cooked in, so that flavor is going to shine through as well. Oh, it's good. So, I'm, I'm, I don't feel like it needs more seasoning. So I ain't putting no more seasoning in. We don't need no more. But if you need more, then you put more. Okay? Think about what seasonings you need. Okay? So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I have some fish. And I want to take that fish. <clears throat> I'm going to season it. I'm going to turn my oven on. And I'm going to bake some fish. Okay? I know, I know, I know, I know. I didn't tell you guys I was making fish, but this is just what we're having for dinner. Okay, so I'm, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to go ahead 
and throw together some fish. And I'm just baking it. It's just going to be quick and simple. And you guys will get to see another recipe. Okay? Gina's dance means it's good. <laughs> yeah, that's not really how I dance, you know. But I think it was a dance move. <laughs> All right, so... I have some orange roughy. I turned my oven on 355 degrees. I'm going to bake these babies. No, we're not frying them because we don't need all that fried food, right? Yes, we would love it to be fried. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd love to have some fried fish right now, but we don't need it. You know, just to be honest, when you think about different things, I am going to rinse the fish off as well with cold water. When you think about some of the foods that we eat, some of the things that we drink, you know, you just really need to step back and say, do I really need to have it fried, deep fried with that cornmeal batter on it, you know, with the flour on it, you know? Like seconds, you think about it. Okay, so what I wanna do real quick, I'm gonna cover that up so the potatoes can cook. Get in there. <laughs> You know what? Listen, God is amazing. You hear me? God is absolutely amazing. You know, I know that just came out of the blue, but when I think of the goodness, all of the goodness that God has done in our lives, you know, keeping us safe, taking care of us, and healing us when we're sick, and, you know, taking care of our loved ones, you just got to say, thank you, Lord. You know, I, I, I literally was, went from talking about cooking fish, eating healthy, to how God was good. God is absolutely amazing. And one of the best things that you can do in life is form a relationship with God, and you will just see a difference in your life. Come close to God, and he will come close to you. <clears throat> All right, look at that. I, I'm making two packs. Because I know, I know they're going to be wanting to eat, like, I don't know, maybe three pieces. And I might want two pieces. And guess what? I can eat two pieces. Guess why? Because it's healthy. So I figured, amen. I see amen. Amen to that. <laughs> yes, but it's so true. It's so true. When you think of the goodness of God. You know, and here's the thing. Things will happen in all of our lives. Things happen in everybody's life. But God somehow gets you through. God somehow gets you through. I can just remember when I was younger, I'm um, just thinking about different things, like uh, how are you going to pay this bill, or whatever it may be. But then when you think, how did you ever get through it? And in the end, God took care of the situation. It's just something really amazing. <laughs> is this flounder? This is not flounder. This is my favorite fish, which is called orange ruffy. And ruffy is spelled R-O-U-G-H-Y. R-O-U-G-H-Y, I believe. Let me rinse this off, and then we're going to pat it dry with a paper towel. Okay? Just a quick rinse. Not with hot or warm water. It's going to be cold water, and then I'm going to pat it dry. Okay, I'm coming back into the pitcher. I want to get some butter and lemon out of my refrigerator, and we're going to season the daylights out of this fish. You hear me? Oh, yes, we are. So I already have um, salt and pepper garlic and onion powder. I want some Old Bay seasoning. And I really would like to find, I would love if I could find um, lemon pepper. But if we don't have, if I can't find it because I got all these flowers here, I'm just going to use some fresh lemon anyways. Parsley flakes, butter and lemon. And that's going to be our dinner today here at the Young's house. My husband said, what are we having for dinner today? I said, cabbage and baked fish. Mm. 
Yes, we are. Oh, I'm going to have to get me some lemons. So guess what I've been doing? Um, I have been drinking in the morning before even a cup of coffee. I've been drinking uh, a two tablespoons of lemon juice mixed in an eight ounce glass with one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, the kind that is unpasteurized, it has the mother in it. Shake it up real good, put it in warm water and you drink it and it is really healthy for your gut. So I, I've been doing that and it's so exciting uh, because they just say it's, it's like so many health benefits for you. So I've been trying it and I'm feeling the benefits already. And I've only been doing this for just a couple days. So I'm going to keep doing it. So I'm going to give me some more lemons. Because lemons is just not something that I just have around the house, you know. Let's see. I might turn around and use two baking dishes. I'm okay with that. Our cabbage will be done very shortly. I'm just want to sop up some of this extra liquid with a paper towel. Now, we're going to season the daylights out of it. There, you know, as thin as the fish is, there's really no need to season both sides. Okay? Obey seasoning is going to definitely be something that gives you straight up amazing flavor. It's great for seafood, but not only is it good for seafood, it's good for chicken and beef and pork. And it says it right here. It says it's good for poultry, for salads and meats. And I don't think a lot of people read that fine print. When they think uh, obey right away, they think seafood. But clearly on the bottle, they tell you, use it for salads. Use it for poultry and different meats. And, and I like reading different bottles because uh, of different seasonings because they'll tell you what they want you to use it on. All right, let's see. It is a good morning. Okay. Jackie says that is a great morning, uh, something to do in the morning, drinking that. And what I've seen is um, I feel like my stomach feels good in the morning when I wake up. You know, um, I feel like I haven't had any acid reflux, um, haven't had stomach aches or anything. So I'm hoping that this works for me. We'll, we'll just see how it goes, you know? All right, so I put salt and pepper. I'm going to put garlic and onion powder right here. Got the oven preheated. We're going to slice some lemon and put it right on top of here. We're going to put a couple of tads of butter on top. And that butter's going to melt down into this fish. And this is going to be delicious. Now, baking fish in the oven, it don't take you forever in a day. It does not take you forever in a day to bake. Okay? Just take a look in at it and see if it's done. Okay? So I want to slice up some lemon. And we'll put a nice slice of lemon on top of each piece. And that lemon will extract this beautiful flavor. If you have lemon pepper, you can use that. Okay? And we'll be eating a very healthy meal today. You take the seeds off if you want, but, you know, if you got little kids or elderly, you might want to get rid of the seeds for them so they don't have any issues, you know, eating seeds. Like if it was just me eating, I would eat around the lemon seed, but since you're feeding others, you want to just, you know. Okay, so look at this. Come on in. Come on in. Every piece. We want to give every piece love. How do you give every piece love? Well, we're going to put that little bit of lemon onto every single one. Okay? And then, guess what? A tad of butter, and we're going to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice onto each one before putting it in the oven. Are you excited? 
<laughs> Are you excited? I don't know. They had a lower sodium obey. Oh, they do have a low sodium obey. Don't quote me, but I, I think they do. I think they do. Okay. Got to get some lemon from here. All right, and then I'm going to turn around, squeeze a little bit of lemon. Now, see, I like to make everything purdy. I don't usually say per pretty like that. I say purdy on here. All right, look at that. Gorgeous. Get this baby in the oven. Look at that. How pretty. How simple. How simple. Listen, you could do this same thing, everything, that all ingredients that I just put on this fish. Try it with chicken tenders in the oven. Even with the lemon, even with the old bay, Gina, absolutely, absolutely. All right, a little squeeze. Just a little squeeze, okay? Just a little squeeze. Mm, mm, mm. Girl, you are something else in this kitchen. Ah, 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 got my taste buds salivating. All right, a tad of butter into the oven. We're going to check on our cabbage, and it should be done. The potatoes should be done, and if they're not, they almost are done. <laughs> I wanted to say they should be damn near done. <laughs> All right, here we go. 355. Cook it till it's well done. No covering. Don't cover it. If you cover it, You'll steam them, and we're not trying to steam our fish today. We don't want to steam it. We want to bake it. We want those edges to get crispy, because believe it or not, those edges will get nice, beautiful, and crispy. All right. Into the oven, and we'll check on our cabbage. That oven is nice and hot. OK. All right. Now, I feel like I'm going to put um, a little bit of water in the bottom of my pan. <clears throat> Guess why? Because I don't want my fish to stick to my pan. It's possible it could stick, but a lot of the butter will um, melt, and it'll kind of help the fish come up with ease, but I'm just going to help it by giving it a little bit of water to the bottom of the pan, but not a whole lot, you know. And that's enough for both pans. Okay, let's check in on it. Check in on it. If you're just now coming in, give a thumbs up. Let's check on this. Let me get a fork. <laughs> Wee! Oh, potatoes, let me see. Let's see what we got. Okay, how you doing, potato? Ooh, ooh, are you done? Hold on, are you done? Let's see. Or do you need to cook a little longer? Mm, I'm gonna eat all that. Mm. 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 Potato needs five more minutes. Come in and look at our cabbage and see what we have. We have an amazing masterpiece. Dinner will be served in five minutes. Oh my goodness. Listen, all I can say is make you some Gina Young style. <laughs> Get the steam out of my face. <laughs> I'm trying to give the camera a smile and Get the steam out of here. <laughs> y'all, listen, y'all would laugh so hard if you ever got to see behind the scenes of the cooking video and or the live. You know, because different things happen. Funny things may happen. You know, and um, a lot of things you don't get to see. <laughs> At, like that I'm trying to smile and the steam is just all in my face you can't even see 
But I, I just laugh at some of the things like, man, I wish they could have seen that. <laughs> a facial is expensive. <laughs> I thought she was swatting at flies. <laughs> yes, Christopher, you're never too late. Thank you, Sonia. Yes, happy belated Valentine's Day to you as well. Mildred is just totally laughing. Linda says, uh, can I get some? Absolutely you can, Linda. Linda, Linda. Listen, Linda. You, did y'all see that little boy where um, he uh, was telling, his mom's name was Linda, and he was telling her, she was trying to tell him something, right? He was a little tiny thing. He had a green shirt on, but he was telling her, listen, Linda, listen. Like, she, he wasn't trying to hear anything that his mom was saying, and he kept saying, listen, Linda. And so that... Um, I don't know if I'd like to say that video. That video went viral, and people just loved it, and he was the cutest thing ever. He couldn't have been but, like, maybe four or five years old. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not even five. Listen, I know we said five minutes. Let's give it about another five minutes, and then we're going to eat. Meanwhile, guess what I want to do? Because... If you started cooking with me and you're cooking along with me, your food is done, basically. Our food's done. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. Somebody in the chat tell me you're ready to pray. We're going to pray. Are you ready to pray? That's it. Uh, Nancy says that pot of cabbage and some cornbread cakes, that's all I need. <laughs> 647, thank you. Chow down. Okay, Shay says, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for everyone in this chat today. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy. I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone in this chat is blessed. I pray that you bless over their lives, that you keep them safe. I pray that you keep their family safe in Jesus Christ's name. I pray that you give them a peace of mind. No weapons formed against anyone in this chat shall prosper. We bind the devil away from us on a daily basis. Devil, you stand no chance. And I want you all to uh, let the devil know every day that the devil stands no chance in your life. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless over their finances, bless over their health in Jesus Christ's name. And we thank you once again for your mercy, your love time, and your understanding. Thank you for the food that you give us, the love, the peace, and the joy, and the roof over our head. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, my holy king. He says, Lord, I receive this prayer. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yes. So now, and, and, and I want you all to look at something really quickly. What I want you to look at is how I don't know if you all have been paying attention when I do my lives and when I do my videos how I clean up as I go cleaning up as you go is just going to help you in the long run it's going to help you to not be stressed out because being stressed out is not fun right and so if you clean up as you go as you use ingredients you move them out the way so you know what you've used so if I've used spices, I push them so I know that I've used them already. If I've used the uh, chicken broth, I push it out the way so I know I've used it. And what I haven't used is still near me. I, but it, 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 it really will make you stress-free. And clean the dishes as you go, you know. I got this cornbread here. I'm going to cut just one, just one slice. And guess what? The cabbage is turned off. Cabbage is turned off. <laughs> Wait. Uh, okay. Here, I'm not going to eat a whole lot. Guess why? Because I want to eat with my family and my fish is not done. You know, you, you know, you know, you know. So I'm going to cut me a piece of cornbread. 
You gotta have the cornbread, right? Ooh, wait, I'm gonna show you how fluffy. Uh, somebody said to me, is pre-made cornbread good? You bet it is, look at this. Oh, look at the edges. Somebody say, yes, ma'am. You know, ooh. And that piece right there, it, it's calling my name. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. -hmm. mm. I learned that when I was little, clean as you go. It is, it's very moist. And I feel like right before they put it into the container, it's like they slather it with butter. So there's no need to heat it up and put butter on it. I feel like it already has it on there. Uh, uh, your mom always used to say, a good cook cleans up behind himself. You bet. You bet. So if we take a look, so if the camera can just take a look at everything that we've done, and you can even look down into the, uh, into the sink. <laughs> take a look into the sink and, and see what we've done so far. Not like really come in there so they can see what we've done. Okay? And right here, can they see this? And that's just a little bowl of hot soapy water. Boom. And everything else around us, you know, I got some spices over there, but we, you know, we can always put that away. But for the most part, when it's time to eat, everything is nice and cleaned up. So now let's eat. Everybody's ready. Oh my goodness. Gina, that's enough talking. We ready to eat. How many of you get the hot sauce for me? How many, how many of you like hot sauce? on your cabbage. You're the one, you're the one, tell me you do. Tell me you do. <laughs> you say, yes, the cabbage juice is so good. So in order for me to get the cabbage juice, I'm gonna have to use a bowl. And if I use a bowl, it's gonna be hard for y'all to see what I'm eating. So I want the cabbage juice, but I also more than I want the cabbage juice, I want y'all to be able to see what I'm eating. So I'm gonna go ahead, decide to put the cabbage onto a plate so y'all can see. So there's two potatoes, just cause I, cause I know some of y'all want the potatoes, right? I'm gonna get that sausage put on there. Oh, mommy, somebody, somebody, oh me, oh my. Wee, Jenny Young style. <laughs> That's all I can say. All right, it's time to eat. Shay says yum. That's all I can say is yum. I got hot sauce. I like hot sauce on cabbage, but not all the time do I have the hot sauce. You know, on the cabbage. Got my paper towel. I got some cold water in front of me, which I'm gonna start changing that. Because a lot of doctors, a lot of people are is saying, and don't quote me on this, but a lot of people is saying the best type of water, turn your stoves off if you have not done so, uh, best type of water is room temperature or warm water. So I'm going to start, I don't know how I'm going to start doing that because I am a sucker for water with a lot of ice in it. So my cup right now has a whole lot of ice, but hopefully by tomorrow I can start doing the warm water constantly or room temperature water constantly. Come close these cartons. All right, turning the microphone off. Close the curtains, cause you know they gonna say somebody looking in the window. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. You know who you are. Who's that in the window, Gina? Look, and it's dark out there, ain't it? Oh, let me see that. I'm going to tell y'all something funny after I try the food. The blinds are open. <laughs> he said the blinds are open and the monster is coming. <laughs> I know, I know, y'all Y'all started making me think that. <laughs> y'all started making me believe that. <laughs> That's why I'm closing them early. <laughs> All right, let me do my face, get the oil off my face. 
when I stand back there, my face just gets so oily. But that's just the type of skin that I have. But it's so crazy that they tell you that oil is good for your skin. I don't like it. I'd rather have dry skin than have an oily face. But I guess, you know, I can deal with it. I just, you know, do like this and fix it. <laughs> hot sauce on your Dorito. Oh, hot sauce on your Dorito casserole. Okay. So, somebody remind me that I need to tell you something real funny, and I'm going to have everybody in here laughing, okay? Mm. Sonia, that's funny. She said, come turn this light off over here. She said, the, the monster needs some cabbage. Turn that light off and, and put it back under the bar. Tell us something real funny, okay. Shut the front door. Oh, uh, what you talking about? Okay, look. How gorgeous is this? No, Gina, you never want dry skin. Okay. Well, Lord, please forgive me for that. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, somebody say yes. This is the type of cabbage that I grew. There's a potato. Look at it. Somebody. Oh, that's what you're looking for, right? Oh, my goodness, says Miss Karen. And look, look, look. There's flavor on that sausage. You hear me? Oh, wait. All right. All right. Okay. So let's try it. I know y'all can only see my mouth, but I'm going to let you see me here in a second. We got, we got to blow this thing. Thank you, Mildred. Thank you. And like I said, this, this is healthy. You know, it's not. Listen, when you make it fried, heck yeah, it's delicious. It's good. But do we need all that oil, all that bacon grease, all that chicken grease to fry it in and it's oily when you eat it? No, you don't. Let's, let's, let's taste it. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. Mmm. You know it's good when before, before you even done chewing that first bite, you go on in for another bite. And look at the texture. Beautiful texture, right? Okay, okay, let's do it again. Mmm, 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 mmm. Listen, this right here is something else. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. There's a little bit of cabbage juice at the bottom of this cornbread. You hear me? Do you hear me? Ah! Mm. I don't know who needs to hear this. But if you make this recipe, mm -mm -mm. I, I'm not even going to tell you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fish is okay. Okay. It needs a little time to cook, you know. It's just not ready yet. But I'm going to take you over there um, when I go to check on it so we can see how it's looking okay but right now it's okay it's so funny that um i can smell things when they're done i can smell a cake and no my grandma told me this my grandma said it's when i was younger she'd be making them pound cakes and she'd say uh i i don't smell it it ain't done and then she say I can smell the cake. It's done. Go ahead and get it out. And I'm think. I say, I say, was you timing it? No. When I smell my cake, it's done. And guess what? It was done every time. I don't even think my grandma wore a watch. You know? All right, look. I know some of you want the hot sauce. Who wanted the hot sauce? 
I love how the comments disappear so you can see. Y'all are so funny. Mmm. Mmm. That was a good taste. Mine. Mmm. <laughs> okay. Mmm. Now, I'm going to cut the potato for you. I know a lot of you want to taste that potato. See how the skin, and see how it's not mushy. Don't you dare put the potato in too early. You want it to still stay together like this. You want it to be beautiful, but yet it's going to be soft. Socks coming off. <laughs> Absolutely. But... If you put the potatoes in too early, they'll turn into mush. And you make sure you fold it once the potatoes go in. Stirring it, you're going to break them up. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Look how soft. Look how soft. Soft and creamy. Dreamy. I need more hot sauce. I don't need it, but I really liked how that... How that you know, that little bit of sourness kind of hit me. Let's see. Here you go. Y'all are so funny with the comments. <laughs> y'all, y'all will, uh, the comments will not be there when I put something up to the camera. Latika says, I'm at the door. <laughs> Latika, you, you funny. Mm, 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 mm. And this, this is just enough. Mmm. 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 That's more than a taste. <laughs> Seconds is on the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Nobody reminded me I wanted to tell y'all something funny. All right, so let me tell you. All right, are y'all ready? Gina, to be honest, I never put potatoes in my cabbage. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sonia, you uh, uh, you love it. Now you know the little Yukon gold ones. You can use that. It makes you like I said, if they're the big ones, it's this big. Slice it in quarters. But if it's just a little one, just throw it in there. And it's gorgeous. You know, it, it makes for a beautiful cabbage, and people like that potato in there. Okay. Um. So listen. Re okay. Okay. So you're ready for it. Why do you pronounce potato like that? Um, I, I don't know. Why do you pronounce potato like you do? Okay, Here, here's how it goes. This right here. Does anybody know what this is? Uh, let me put it, club. take the uh, comments off the screen. I'm gonna put it, hold, take the comment off real quick. <laughs> Take the comment off. Oh, oh, y'all laughing at me when I just said. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Anybody know what this is? If you if you don't know, tell me and I and then I'll tell you. So let me show you. Okay. We do. We pronounce words differently. We all look different. Uh, we all are different, and um, that that's just what it is, you know? Okay, so this right here, it, it, it is, it's a flower. Okay, I don't know exactly what type of flower, but I do have two neighbors across the street that, that has these. And down the street, actually, these are everywhere. 
I don't have them in, in my yard, but uh, I know what they are. And so when they dry up, that's what they look like. Okay. And, you know, with the wind blowing and everything like that, uh, this was in our yard. Okay. So it's just a blown off big, in the, in the summertime or in the fall, they bloom in the fall. They're they're sometimes white, they're sometimes purple and pink and just really beautiful, right? And that's how big they are. But when they dry up, they look shriveled and this is what they look like. It's the real thing. My husband took the dogs out uh, before he was recording the uh, 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 chicken marsala video for me. He got the back door open. He's telling the dogs, he's saying, he's hydrangea, okay, it could be. He's telling the dogs, uh-uh. He, he do like this, uh-uh, get back here. And that's what he's saying, get back here, don't go over there. Get, and I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? Because they, they know what they're doing outside. They're good boys, they know how to come in when they're supposed to. They use a the bathroom, they mind their business, they come back in. They don't try to leave the yard or nothing. And he's like, uh-uh. Don't touch it. Get over here. Come on. And I'm thinking, what the heck is happening? <laughs> I go to see what's going on. And he say, baby. He say it's like a wasp nest. A big wasp nest. He's like, it's a yellow jacket nest or something out there, right? He's like, I don't want them to get bit or stung. <laughs> and I'm like, this? And he shows me, he's like, don't go close to it. <laughs> don't go close to it. I go over and pick it up. I say, baby, I said, this is a flower. I said, this is a flower. It's a dried flower. He said, look like a wasp nest to me. I thought it was some something, something big in there. He said, I thought it was gonna get him. <laughs> he was yelling at him too. He was like, he was like, uh -uh, don't touch it. Uh -uh, get back here. <laughs> It was this. And I said, I said, give it to me. And I took it in the house. He said, what are you getting ready to do? I said, I'm going to tell the world. <laughs> I'm going to tell the world. He started laughing. He said, no, you ain't. I said, yes, I am. <laughs> give me something to talk about. <laughs> so that's what happened. I was like, what's going on? What is he telling them not to touch? And um, he was scaring the dogs. <laughs> I know they was like, what's happening? <laughs> so that was the story. I, I just thought it was so funny. I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> you said it does look like a wasp nest. Listen, so last summer, we had a wasp nest on the front porch. We had three in the back. And then we had some something, some type of nest in the backyard. And they came out and got rid of all of them. And I was just like, oh, we thank you. Because we don't want to get bit. Hmm. Listen, I'm going to check my fish. But this right here, mm, mm, mm. -mm. And you see how those last bit of bell peppers and onions or bell peppers still have some beautiful color because we didn't cook the daylights out of them, you know. But the other set of bell peppers that we put in earlier, they just kind of melted down. And you wouldn't even be able to see them anymore, you know. Hmm. I got to check the fish. If I go check on it and it's done, I'm taking y'all with me, okay? All right, be right, I'll be right back.
will plan for to check the fish in let's say 10 minutes my husband likes for his fish to be well well done and he likes that crispy edge and now uh, I will show you all when baking fish how I don't care for the bees, the, the bees or wasp nests either. It scares me. I'll tell you all a story about when I got stung two times. They, they flew up my dress when I was 18. But um, the, the, the edges of the fish will get crispy, right? Believe it or not, I know. It's something about the butter and those thin edges. The butter melts onto the fish as it heats up, right? And, and, and it leaves like butter on the edges and the edges will crisp up, get crispy and beautiful. And so that's what I'm looking for when I'm baking fish. Um, it, it's just delicious. But I've seen that on a few of them, but some of them didn't have it. So I'm gonna cook them for another five, 10 minutes. Oh, oh, so remember last year um, when, whatever it was, I had it in my, um, uh, in the bushes in the back. Y'all know I sit on that big couch back there in the backyard. But uh, the, ex what, what do you call them? Exterminator people. They wind up saying, if it's bees, we, can't, we don't kill bees here, right? And I thought, what do you mean? And I totally understand that, and I respected that. He said, but if it's another, if it's something else, then we'll kill it. He turned around. I guess he had to take pictures of them. And they were living under the ground, not actually in the bushes, which was kind of nuts. And so what he did, he, he said, I'll be back. He goes to his truck, and he brought, or, or no, he, he left. He came back the next day and came back with powder. And he's squeezing that powder all over the bushes. And within 24 hours, they were gone. He was like, I don't want anybody to come outside in the backyard for, for at least eight hours or something. They were gone the next day. He said, but we're not allowed to kill bees. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Because I didn't know. And I do appreciate bees for what they do. You know, we all appreciate you know, insects and animals for what they do. But I'm still scared of them. <laughs> but luckily they was not bees, they was something else and he was able to get rid of them. <laughs> 300, I did, I put them on 355 degrees and just cook them until those edges get crispy. But I, make sure you stay because I, I wanna show you those crispy edges. Once that happens to the fish, you know they cooking up just perfectly. And you don't need to see it on every single one unless you want that crispy edge on every one. I don't know. I don't know. You might want to look it up. Um, I guess. I don't know. They said if it's a bee, if it's a bee hive, they're not allowed. To, like it's it's illegal yeah that that's like on the grounds of what he was saying he was basically saying like it's illegal we can't you know but it wasn't it was something else i don't remember what what he said because when you look at them they look like bees because i don't know you know but then when you look at them they look like wasp i just don't know what they were but whatever they were they were yellow and black um, but he said they're actually, he said they swarming around the bush, but they were living in the ground. It was so interesting. <laughs> Smash bees and take their honey. How do you do that? Oh my goodness, I never heard that. I, I'm going in. I'm going in for some more cabbage. Mmm. He said, if you swat a bee, with, they will defend themselves. Mm, I don't know what he called them. Oh, so when I was 18, I was getting in my dad's car. And um, I said dress, but I must have had, I don't know what I had on. 
Because I knew I didn't have a dress on. Because I know I didn't have a dress on. It could have been my shirt. Somehow they got underneath my shirt. Two of them. Yellow jackets. The bumblebee. The big ones. That, you know, they're this big. Two of them were stuck to my back. <laughs> stuck to my back. Stung me. And it was not funny. I was on my way to my grandmom's house. And she said, well, I told her to look at it. And she, she was like, well, I'll, I'll watch you for a couple hours and make sure you're okay. <laughs> I was fine. She didn't even care. <laughs> well, I'll watch you for a couple hours, make sure you don't swell up or nothing. <laughs> Ooh, that's scary, Derek. eat all the cabbage and now I don't want my fish that's why I really didn't want to eat because I wanted to have my cabbage and fish together you know but I'll get a piece Okay, so guy, the guy was timed out. If they getting crazy on here, just straight up block them. Report them, block them. Don't even times them out. Because when we times them out, it's, it only gives them like five minutes to be muted, and then they can come back into the chat, okay? If they say anything crazy, anything stupid, anything rude or mean or scary, Block them. Block them and report them. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Because when they come in, you know, we see them again, we'll just block them. It's okay. Shirley Clark, thank you for coming in and joining us. How about a cheese waffle sandwich? Ne never had it a day in my life. You hear me? I never heard of it. Never heard of it. I stepped on a bee. Oh, my husband told me a story about when he was younger. He said a bee stung him in his hand. And he was doing like this, trying to get it off. He's shaking it. He said, that thing wouldn't come off. And I said, why? He said the stinger was in him. <laughs> he said the bee, the bee was just on there. And he, I, he was little. He was afraid to touch it, to get it off. But he kept flinging his hand. <laughs> he said that stinger was in there, and that bee was stuck to him. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, you can recall when you were stung by a bee when you was five. Oh, my goodness. Oh, your mom took tobacco. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Thank you. You're joining very late, Cynthia. It's okay. I'm just happy you came in. <clears throat> give a thumbs up. Make sure you give a thumbs up. You might have to back out to give a thumbs up. I'm going to check. Time to check on the fish. Time to check it. Okay. I think I'm going to take y'all with me, too. You ready? Oh, yes, that fish is ready. Okay, so let me get the, the microphones back on so y'all can hear me. And you get to see an amazing fish recipe, Jeannie Youngstown. This is how I make my fish. And you would love this recipe as well. You hear me? Trust me when I tell you this. The sound will come back when I get over to the other side. Okay, is it on? It's on.
<laughs> you just remember to order an EpiPen. <laughs> yeah, so hey, all that B talk, right? <laughs> just remember to order my EpiPen. And those of you that don't know what an EpiPen is, it's when you get stung or bit by something, I'm, I'm assuming, don't, if, if I'm wrong, just, you know, say in the chat, uh, it will make sure that you don't have an allergic reaction that can kill you because there are some people that have such a bad reaction that, you know, uh, it, it doesn't turn out good for them, you know. Oh, look. Hold on, this is the one. Hold on. Look at this, somebody. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my goodness. So now, come on in. I don't want you to burn yourself on the, on the thing, but I want them to see this crispy edge here, okay? Let me see, let me bring it. Let me bring it a little close. Woo. Can you see? Can they see? Crispy edge right there. Can anybody see it? Let's see. How's that? Can you see it? That's what I'm always looking for when I bake my fish. Now, if you're using a big, huge piece of fish, you're not going to get that crispy edge that we're looking for, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. This one's going to fall apart, but it's okay. This is what's for dinner at the Young's house. I couldn't be more excited to serve this to my family. Oh, yes. Look how crispy this is. It's, not, it's like a little treat. <laughs> like a little treat right there. And then you bite down into this soft, beautiful, moist fish that has been so well seasoned. You hear me? And I, I got to try it. Oh, I, I have to try it. What do you mean? Who do you think I am? Heavenly Father, we like to thank you once again for this fish. Come on in and we can try it. Oh, we. All right, so I'm going to take this off. Do I want to try that one? Yes. <laughs> Ooh, let me show you how flakety, flakety, moist, tender, Seasoned. Ooh -wee. What's that look like? Do they got a good view? Let them see the spices. Mmm. Let's do it. No bones in this baby. No bones. Listen, I don't suggest if you're making um, fish and you're baking it, don't get a fish that's got bones in it. Unless you just don't mind. You know, if you're the person that don't mind eating bones or, or working around the bones, I don't want a fish that has bones in it. Let's try it. Mmm, hot dog. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Hold on. Mmm. Come, come, let, let the people see the flake, flakety, flake, flake, flake. Ah. Mm. I need another piece. Mmm. Sprinkle you some lemon juice on there. Hot, give, give me the hot sauce. There's people in there saying they want hot sauce. I, I don't see a comment saying that. But I know there's somebody in there that's saying right now, it's probably Saj. Gina put the hot sauce on there. I, I know what Saj is saying. Gina, the hot sauce. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. You ain't said nothing but a word. Mm, mm, mm. Gina Young is going to hook you up. I suggest you tell your family and friends and everybody you know all about Gina Young, what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Tell your dad the food is ready. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh -wee. Oh. Guys, that fish is so good. 
Mm, mm, mm. Make you want to smack somebody. Not really, but you know. Oh, when you make tartar sauce. Okay, that's interesting. You put hot sauce. Heidi says hot sauce on fish is delicious. Thank you, Sonia. Yes, thank you, Sonia. Absolutely. Guys, this was delicious. Oh, my goodness. I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed this meal. And, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. How is the fish tank? Doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, what the heck? I done lost my train of thought when I read Little Bit's message. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I don't feel weighed down after eating. And I didn't eat all my cornbread because I don't need it. You know what I mean? So let me show you how much cornbread I left. Because I don't need it, my, you know. But I ate the cabbage. And uh, I'm going to have a piece of baked fish. I'm going to get my workout clothes on because I got a good workout to do. I'm going to work out for about an hour. Did y'all enjoy this live today? Miss Karen, thank you. On Saturday, Saturday I'm going to be making a fried chicken dinner. Somebody tell me you'd like to make that along with me. <laughs> Gina, UPS there to pick up my package. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite color is blue. A wonderful live. Thank you, Heidi. I enjoyed my time with you all. I'm going to cut it short, but I hoped that you all enjoyed the live today. I'm not getting off of here without a big old hug. Oh, is, chicken, is, is a chicken dinner good for Saturday? Because that's what I was going to do. Gina, please read my message. And this is Roseanne. Let me see. If I don't see it, then I just don't see it. A uh, Roseanne, there it is. Gina, I have some frozen homemade sofrito. Can you give me some tips to use? It with sofrito, um, Gina Young style. Absolutely, I can, Roseanne. Now, here's what I'm gonna suggest you do, cause you caught me kind of late. I'm gonna get off of here. Um, I can make a promise to you that on Saturday, I'll give you some tips, tell you what you can be using it for, tell you what recipes. I'll tell you what recipes you could look at of mine that has sofrito in it and um, we can talk about that all you have to do is say Gina this is so-and-so you told me if I came in we'll talk about it and you'll tell me what recipes and how to use the frozen sofrito okay so I can do that on Saturday Gina Young is going live Saturday 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time I'm going to be showing you all how to make a delicious chicken dinner Gina Young style it's going to be fried chicken it's going to be delicious we might make some homemade mashed potatoes and gravy we'll just see um all right so you remind me say hey Gina you told put a big stop sign in in the chat tell me you told me to remind you okay and then we'll talk about that Saturday 4 p.m eastern standard time Gina Young's going live I ain't getting off of here without a big old hug Give me a hug. I love y'all so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to change into some workout clothes, uh, edit this video, and I'm going down in that basement, and I'm going to get hot and sweaty 
I'm going to work out hard. I love y'all, and I'll see you Saturday. But listen, before Saturday, I'll see you tomorrow because i got some amazing recipes I want to bring out to you all. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified anytime Gina Young goes live or if I post a community post, okay? Make sure you are subscribed. Gina Young loves each and every one of y'all. God bless. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know about Gina Young. God bless.